So this is a, uh, a corn header. It's uh, designed specifically for corn. It travels between the rows. If you'll notice, there's two stripper plates here. And underneath, these are knives. These knives spin towards each other. So as the stock is coming through, these knives grab the stock and pull it down. And then the cob hits the stripper plates here. These gathering chains take the cob to the back. There's an auger that takes it to the throat. See how that works? I'm just reversing it and you can see the knives going. Bring the, the corn up to an auger, feeds it through the combine, and it goes through a, a big rotor which uh, takes the, the grain off of the cob, separates it, the grain ends up coming into the back right behind me, and all of the cob and any leaves or pieces of stock will go out the back. grains coming in the back. You can see if there's uh, you know maybe excessive damage to the grain which means maybe you're uh, you're running the rotor a little bit too fast or you have the concaves a little bit too tight and you're damaging it or there's a bit of cob or a bit of stock getting in there. You just take a look that looks really good right there but if I had to make adjustments I can I can make them on the go. The bin back there, it'll when it's absolutely filled right to the top, there's probably close to seven, six and a half to seven ton. So that's just telling me the grain tank is uh, three quarters full right now. This year is is uh, better than normal. Uh, just looking at my monitor here, it's running just just over 200 bushel to the acre. Uh, for this area, that's exceptional. Normally, if, if we're in that 150 bushel range, that's, you know, we're usually pretty happy with that. Uh, southwestern Ontario, uh, which they tend to get better yields, they have a little bit more heat, uh, probably a bit more topsoil. Um, you know, they're used to 180, 200 bushel crops. We'll feed our dairy cattle. It might be anywhere between three and four hundred ton, it just all depends on how much we need. And then whatever we don't need for ourselves, we'll sell. It might go uh, into the feed industry. Other than that, it could be people in the neighborhood uh, buying some corn for their cattle. It could go to the ethanol industry. It could go to uh, Casco, who are taking the corn sugars out for the soft drink industry. Uh, it might go to make uh, rye whiskey. We grow it primarily for our own animals and, uh, and then what we don't need we'll, we'll sell. This is going to be dry shelled corn. Uh, right now it's probably coming off between 25 and 28% moisture. Uh, we'll be taking it to uh, the grain elevator and it will be dried down to 15.5% and then stored. Today is November 14th, so we're midway through November. Um, if everything goes well, we should be done the corn probably within uh, within about a week, a week and a half. Usually, we're done harvesting corn in, in November, but there's the odd there's the odd year that uh, you know you may get pushed into into December. Well, this is telling me. Um take the, the gross weight of the truck right now and then when we dump it off we come back and take a tear weight so that'll know how much grain we actually brought in.
going through the uh, uh, pit here right now. There's uh, an unloading auger underneath and it's dropping it into this leg. We call it our wet leg. So there, there's cups on that leg and it takes the grain right to the top and then, it, and, it, and then it's dropping into the wet bin up here. And then it will go into the dryer and it will dry the corn. It comes in right, this year it's a little wet. We're around 28%. Most years we're, you know, under 25. But corn to store and keep needs to be under 15.5. So we have to take that 10 points of moisture out with a, a dryer that's using propane and heat and it goes through a continuous flow dryer. And so we'll dry, when it's this wet, we'll dry a little more than one of these truck loads uh, an hour. When it's drier, we'll do more than that. And then once it's dry, we, it goes, it's elevated up the other leg there and then we put it into our, one of our storage bins uh, to hold until we ship it out. If it's not dry and you put it in the bin, this, this stuff will just mold. It'll just go rotten and, and it'll go bad. Um, if it goes in the bin, it could heat and cause a bin fire. So we grab a sample every load and then we can get the dockage and the moisture. We have a moisture uh, meter in the, in the scale house and uh, so we get the moisture of the grain and then uh, you pay according to how wet it is. So if it's, if it's wetter, then you'll pay more to dry it than if it's drier.